what I'm going to do first of all is make, I've mixed up some orange paint here. There's quite a lot of white in it, uh, fairly, fairly light orange paint on it goes, and we just start to block in those areas. that are orange and leave the bits that are white so you can see by putting the white on uh, the orange on top of the white end up with quite a bright color it doesn't have to be super accurate to the pencil lines but we want it to be nice and tight to the edge I'm not worrying about any kind of shading at this point. Just getting that tone, locking it in basically. And his fin. And then the top. Kind of a nice rounded end to this brush. It works very well for this kind of shape. These shapes at the end of the fin. Thing. This paint is slightly thick, but I don't mind it's uh, going on quite well. Even. As we come into this corner, rather than trying to do it with that bigger brush, I'm just going to take a smaller brush like this and just come in and do that end winky bit. Back to this one. The orange does actually go right to the edge of that fin. Once again, we've got a pointy bit down the bottom there, and a brush again. Doesn't matter if you go slightly over the lines. If you do it and you don't like it, then you can just push it back away. Any drips as well as spot as they go along. Push it back away and into the bit you're painting, like that, and then repaint. Okay, and then just bring in for those last little areas of detail. Just get in with that thin brush again for the last few bits. Around here. And up. You will get little ridges of paint and little blobs here and there. You just try and even them out as much as you can, but without being too studious about it. So we just remember the second coat. You can see the paint colour is a little bit thinner now. The first it was quite thick now. This one is thinner. And I'm quite simply come in and give it a second coat. A little easier to do because of it being slightly thinner. It goes on a bit sweeter. And that's a much more even flat coat of uh, colour to work on now. We're going to be building it up only with uh, lights and darks create the illusion of it uh, being 3D. I'm going to come in with the next shade down. I've mixed up a slightly darker um, shade of brown. That orange here has got some raw umber in it. Not a lot, just enough to create a slight difference in colour. And I'm just going to basically block in the darker areas with this just slightly darker colour. It's kind of like that. Natural fact comes up a little bit further. Oh, 
all of this area can be darkened. Because it's all dark in the fins. The fins are the lightest bits. His body is a bit darker. Don't worry about these too much if you go over, because I'm going to be painting those white bits again. And not with a pure white. Probably because the they also have tone and shadow and things like that on them. The whole of his face actually has got this dark, darker shade, so. And I'll just come back with the lighter bits in a bit. It goes all the way up there. All the way up here, it's only when you get to the sort of wrinkles on his forehead you really start thinking about the lighter colour. But really, there's all the way up there. And like I just say, at the moment we're just giving a kind of general impression of where the lights and darks fall. see from that, the first layer of shading that you put on also dries very patchy and uh, I'm not going to worry about that because the next layer will start to make the patchiness disappear, recede somewhat and uh, we'll start pushing it more in the direction we want it to go. Just these early essential stages that you have to do don't look great, but you build on it, you work at it. You can see the tone is already there, it's just the finish is a bit patchy. Already starting to take on some 3D uh, uh, kind of look. So just work on it a little more, off we go. Here with me. And you'll see how it starts to come together. Not masses of paint on the brush, just a little dip. And I kind of colouring in and draws the edges. That's where you use a slightly drier brush if you want a soft edge. But basically, I'm just applying a second coat over pretty much everything I did before. Not so vital with these fronds. Just do a little bit. If they do, get lighter. And if they go further away. This top fin is a lot lighter than this bit underneath. There's a little more raw umber going into there. Looking at my picture, I'm looking at where are the very darkest spots. And there's a little bit here. It's a kind of a strange one there, but there it is. Put it in. And now. Um, I'm going to be doing a little bit of other blending, taking the one, the other colour from before, and just blending it in a little bit of the edges. We have uh, the darker one. Ever so. Especially along the top. Just put a line of it in. Just pull it down a little. Uh, 
clear him to the darker shade at the top. And quite a lot darker at the bottom, so this isn't the darkest it's going to go here, it's going to go darker yet at this point here. It comes up to around about there. There might be a couple of these a little bit darker as well. version and it starts to go down literally on the bottom of the lip there and that goes all the way around just looking at the picture see how many those lights and darts are and just trying to copy where you put them it's still sort of being fairly loose about the whole f blending thing. I didn't quite finish up here actually, there is a sort of slightly darker bit that comes up there, like that, and over the top. sort of fade with this drying out brush. See the way it kind of fades at those edges. It kind of becomes a subtle thing, adding the shading in like this, brushing it on gently with an almost dry brush. I didn't used to do it like this, so for a long time I tried wetting to wet all the time and uh, it's just the uh, time consuming and frankly quite hard doing it that way. This way, not simply, you can just sort of bring those, add those darker bits in gradually, a soft feathery brush. I would suggest this particular dark shade goes up to there, comes across here, and joins with the eye socket somewhat. And there's a kind of cheap bony thing going on here and up a bit up here. Most of the time, I'm scrubbing on paint very lightly with that almost dry brush, and I'm only using the sort of fresh, newly loaded brush with the bits that are quite defined. And there's another kind of little, little shadow just drops down there. Completely wipe that brush dry and feather in the edge of that shadow. And we are just working on these shadow areas at the moment, so don't worry too much about them. getting darker in places you're not sure about. Just Build it up. I'm going to go in once more with that same shade into the deepest areas. 
Let's move them a little more. I do actually want them to look quite smooth. In certain places. I can learn a few of these as well. Essentially, a second coat, you're doing it again, doing it twice. And this is pretty much because this is the way this particular colour paint is behaving. It's drying patchy, it's translucent, as I'm saying, and all along, it's a translucent colour, so there's going to be a certain amount of uneven drying. Bits dry thicker and thinner. So just adding coats smooths it out, drying in between the coats, adding fresh coat smooths it out. Once you've got all the darks in place and happy, then start to come back to the lighter shades, start to build in the highlights medium tones and the highlights. Some of the medium tones are there already but I just want to bring them out more. And so here I want that to blend a little better. Go back to the next shade up into this bit. Try to avoid the white as much as possible. <laughs> And then I'll come back with like the next shade up and show you how this starts to work. Pulling it back in the opposite direction. We work on the shadows first and then pull back highlights as we see fit. It's definitely starting to come together. I'll come back on that shadow a bit, it's a bit too dark. Obviously there's a dark bit in his mouth as well, but I'll come in and do that in a minute. Um, I'm going to go in now with the next level of highlight and just wiped the brush clean with my fingers like that most of the colors come off just give it a little shimmy on my trouser like that and uh come in with this light very light one i'm going to test it in the lightest areas first which is the tail a little bit on there just here and there on that tail. It's all quite subtle really isn't it? But, um, and it's those little subtleties that mean the difference between something looking alright and something looking amazing. Often. One of the cheek. Yeah, so a little more, not too much though. And the highlight there, one on top of the mouth about here. One on the bottom of the mouth about here. And just here, and just a moment. It's quite a nice way of blending. See how that's kind of softening those little edges in there? The way that worked. Softening these edges, blending the colours together with an almost dry. Love these slanty brushes for doing this particular task. And just looking on the picture, where are the highlights? Uh, there's got one in there. 
I don't want that to carry on round. It kind of carries on actually, it does join with that. I didn't spot that before, I can see it now. Let it just carry that one on round. And let it join with there. Okay, in somewhere, not too shoddy. Now I'm just gonna straight in with it around the mouth, just to get that lovely bit just below his teeth. Oh. Now very carefully to be neat. As he gets towards this end, it's kind of awkward to do it like that with this brush. You've got to get a smaller brush to finish that off. As you can already see, I just went over there slightly. A bit more of that umber. And just try and do it neatly. I'm going to get closer to it. I can see better. A bit more accurate line. One here. Oh, 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 oh. oh no. No, no. It's in there. Definitely in here. It's much darker than the bit surrounding it. I think we can put that all the way to the front. Actual crease line where his cheek is. Pretty much a line. Yes, it rolls round, it's a bit faded, but then you're just going to do it as a line. Maybe not on there. And did you have the last one? No, I didn't. I went over the white, but it doesn't matter, like I say, I'm going to paint that, repaint that white. Basically, just a bit darker down here under the chin. I kind of like that, a bit like that. So, I'm going to make a slightly stronger orange, mixing in a little bit. That orange and uh, that again under here. The one here. It happens all over the place. It's kind of reflected orange on the darker bit at the bottom. Even in here. Mm. Just a little concern that this bit is slightly too dark as well. So I'll lighten that up. Um was feeling the need to, to just actually work on him a bit more before I put the uh, the lights on and uh, the white bits on. I, I actually feel that this has come on through a little dark. I want to lighten his body up a little bit. I step back and look at it from a distance. Just had a kind of inkling that some of these darts were a bit too dark. So, that one was one of them. That's all right. 
Mm. This is a lighter shade that should hopefully be a bit more apparent when it dries. Adding this lighter colour. Much the same technique I was using before. Lighten up some of those bits, possibly a bit too dark. Meh. Around here. And um, you get the idea. In the palette now, this time I have some very dark grey, black, essentially. Uh, a bit of that background turquoise that I've been using here and there. And then white, slightly purpley grey, ever so slightly off white. And then a darker purpley grey. <clears throat> like I said, I'm just going to start with a bit of a white, then with that original background blue colour. Not the, the one I've been using, more blue for mixing. I'm just going to pop that one along the edge. I don't want it to be pure white because it's not. It's quite thin at that point, the tail, I think. The, 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 the actual material that makes up the tail at that point is very thin, so you can just see through it a bit. Hence having this slightly bluey tinge. I shall do that. All of these particular extremities, that's two, two blue and white. That all goes around the edges. These fins. And if you have a slight feathery thing going on actually at the edge. Because the fins are feathered at the edges. Pretty much. I'm going to do that all the way over because that's going to like the effect. A bit of a feathering just off the ends. Makes a pretty good effect that one. Very simple. You don't have to really do too much more than that, frankly. Moving on to the next bit, a bit of white at the top. That pencil mark. And then we come down into the light. Okay. What should I call it? Light purple. Just nicer to have it, just a little bit of a colour rather than just adding black to it to make grey. Added a bit of a bit of dark purple, a bit of Deep violet, just a hint, deep violet. And that gives us this, uh, this nice shade to paint on here. Into that darkest bit down the bottom there. And then up into the down again with a lighter one. Spin and throw in there. Uh, and then this last bit. I shall. So what I'm going to do is uh, this. It has a bit of a kind of bluey thing going on underneath. That reflection. This colour again. With the purple. And I'll pop that in underneath. Right, let's do a couple of coats of that one. This is that little mistake we made earlier. I think it's going to be white there. Into the light purple again. The of the lines is essential. So I'm going to be going over that last edges with some of the black. And last 
place with this slightly darker grey goes in there. Uh, and then we basically finish off that area with white. And the last job, I'm going to choose a um, fine brush for most of it. And then it comes into each one of these that, each one of these fronds. Then one's across the top and then down and that kind of that kind of that top and down A bit like that. Next one, very thin again. Thin line running down there. Slightly faster bit at the top, not much there. Thin again. That's it. Curl the brush around. It's getting too fat on the brush, and you want to get a point again. Just curl, twist the brush in a circle, pull it along there. You see what I'm doing? Well, in it. Creating a point again. When I come into there, it's thinner. Point. Point over there. Don't do any harm. And uh, this fin. Well, this fin, for some reason, and that one. Are black to the ends. I don't have that white bit at the end. I'm not going to do it. I'm not there in the in the in the image I'm working from, so I'm not going to put it in. Not there. I think it'd be like the same as all the others, and it'd be there, but it's not. So. And I go, blob de blob. Be a bit in and a bit out, a bit. Head a bit uneven. That point there. There. Round to this one over here. Thin ones along those edges again. Don't want to lose the white there. It's important that we leave a bit of white. We don't over paint that bit. It's really important to get that right. Interesting. With just the eyes to go mostly and any last little tweaks on him. Um, do those at the very end. The eyes. What you can do with the eyes is paint the whole lot black. Then come in over the top with with the colouring. We do whole the whole of the pupil. Including the iris, start off black. Just try and make them 
kind of round as you can. Not tricky though. My eyesight gets worse. Yeah, there you are. That one. They're not massive pupils, they're not like um silly manga character or something, they're quite small pupils on these. Regular size. There we are, we start with this black. He's a nice looking key. And uh, yeah, he's looking at me. So just the last step. Another brighter orange. Mm, it's actually the orange is actually um, quite a bit more saturated and stronger than the orange of his body. It's just a bit more vibrant. So I'm going to take a bit from the from there and take my paint palette. I don't want that actual colour, it's not quite right. I'm going to mix that in with the one we did before. A stronger colour. And I want to just create the iris with stronger. And you can be quite fussy about it, but I like to just create it quickly with this little effect. Just a hint of it, basically. And I'll just double coat that. Yeah, so just do that again. It's brighter at the bottom and it fades as it goes up around the eye. There's also a hint of it on that side. And this one, strong at the bottom, fades as it goes up. One more time for good luck. at the bottom to make that bit stronger. And I'm not going right to the edge, I'm leaving a darker um, bit around the edge of the eye. The natural way they look. Some last little, last little flourishes then. A little bit of this original orange in there. I want a little bit of that original orange in here. Slightly darker, running up the side here, and here, pull in those edges, make them a bit tighter around the eye. They're not quite a bit soft. A bit more of the dark stuff. And then yep, last few little last few little highlights now. Working in with this one on here. It's a bit dark the one that's in there, it's a bit hard to tell, isn't it? The one there and the one there. And it is darker. Dead 
Bearing back some of the highlights of the before. <laughs> Under that way. Lid there. He's got another highlight, but it's not as bright as that one. Which one comes up here? One comes around the top of the eye. Like this. And what? Like There we are, it leaves a bit of it darker. This one also needs tidying up. It's a bit loose, I don't want it to be that loose there. Open that one up. Um, there's a slight highlight just to the right of the eye there, a little tiny one. And. Yeah, it's just sort of bits and pieces, really. The one on there, the one on there. Makes that one on the top of his lip. There. And then again. And uh, you can just spot a few little bits and pieces that are being a bit nicer. This one here. There. And uh, it's a bit where he's kind of thin, just joining his skin. And there's this sort of indication of something weird going on there. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Another one here. And um and done and done. There he is. Good old Marlin. Good clownfish on the reef.